Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Android TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. The big story on Action News. Search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another week of Women to Watch. I'm Sue Rocco. It's so great to be here uh, with a local guest this week. Joining me in just a moment will be Devin Caney. And Devin is a a Philadelphia sports personality. She does work with multiple media outlets. And uh, we're going to be talking all about her work in just a moment. Um, It's a very um, sports-related topic today because uh, Sherry Morrison, our Lifestyle Watch contributor, is going to be joined by Brianna DuBose later in the show. Uh, Brianna is the author of The ABCs for College athletes. And it's pretty much a guidebook for parents who are trying to maneuver the crazy uh, collegiate world of athletics and sports. As always, if you're new to the show and you want to learn more or see our lineup, go to womentowatch.net. That's women, the number two, watch.net, N-E-T. So now I'm very excited and happy to welcome to the show, Devin Caney. Devin, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be here. Well, I'm glad we we made it work. It was kind of a last minute. So um, sometimes they're the best shows. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. I, I feel like most things in uh, broadcasting and sports are last minute. So all right. good. I'm glad I, I knew you would have no problem just kind of jumping in and, and joining. Mm-hmm. Um, so I first of all, sports is such a love of mine. I'm always really excited and happy to talk about sports. Um, but I wanted to start with your background and, and talk a little bit about your upbringing in Radnor. And mm-hmm. for the viewers and listeners who may not be familiar, just talk about what that community was like. Yeah. Uh, so Radnor is about 30 minutes outside of Philly. Um, so grew up massive Philly sports fan. Uh, it was an incredible place to grow up. I mean, if you're familiar with Radnor, familiar with the area, uh, I feel very blessed and lucky to have uh, grown up in such an area that I, I always say it's like kind of a special place. I'm still really close with a ton of my high school friends. Um, we still love to go back there. My parents still live there. Most of my friends' parents still live there. So I think that's pretty rare for uh, adults, you know, usually people like to move on and forget their high school or uh, growing up experience, at least like their friends. And we all still look back on it with fond memories. So definitely feel lucky. Definitely a a very sheltered area though. So uh, perhaps that's why I kind of ended up spreading my wings quite a bit and moving around a lot right after college. But um, yeah, I love Radnor, I love Villanova. I know you're a, a Villanova Wildcat yourself. I am. It, it is a beautiful area. And actually, the location is nice. It's close enough to the city yeah. that you can go, you know, back and forth and get a little bit more of that urban um, experience. Yeah. Um, you and I had a great talk before the show, and I loved when you described your parents as the kind of parents that if you said you wanted to go to clown school, <laughs> they would say, that's awesome. Go to and be the best clown you can be. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, talk about their support of kind of your aspirations. Yeah, so I always use that uh, comparison because, um, of course, I never actually asked them if I could go to clown school. Right. But <laughs> my parents have only ever showed me uh, the utmost support throughout my entire life, really anything I wanted to do. And I, I said that because you were asking me, you know, how I got involved in sports and broadcasting and uh, becoming, you know, what what I am now, who I am now. And I think in large part, a lot of that has to do with my parents giving me freedom um, in all things growing up. I mean, the, the only thing I was really like forced to do their one strict, especially my mom, her one strict rule was if I started something, I couldn't quit. And I had to have some sort of activity after school always. So for me and my brother is usually sports. Um, and I remember like at one point I wanted to quit lacrosse and my mom was like, okay, well, if you quit lacrosse, you have to find something else to pick up. So that's how rowing was actually my main sport in high school. And that's kind of how I got into rowing. But, um, yeah, they've just always kind of been my biggest support systems and never felt forced to do or be any specific person or thing or have a certain type of job or live in a certain place. Like, 
like I mentioned at the start of the show, like I've moved around so much because being in broadcasting and journalism is a very nomadic uh, field to be in. And every time, like from Boise, Idaho to Chicago to LA, like my parents are like, oh, moving again. Okay, great. Let's do it. We'll come help you. We'll support you. I went back to grad school to get my master's in journalism at one point. Like we're all in on that. Um, And I think that that is a big reason why I am able to to be where I am now um, in life, in my career, because I never felt really confined by uh, expectations or rules set by my parents. I think people would be surprised to hear that in high school, you went through a period where you were, you know, uh, I, I won't say shy, but lacked confidence and didn't feel like you were part of the, you know, the most popular crowd. And Mm -hmm. here you are in an industry where you're very much putting yourself out there publicly. Um, Tell me what that, you know, uh, during those years where you were kind of trying to find your way, um, Mm -hmm. what was it that led you to the confidence you discovered, um, you know, beginning in college? Yeah, it's, it's funny because you mentioned shy and even to this day, like, I am still a pretty shy person, which is funny because my job is literally to talk Um, and people are always surprised to learn that. So maybe shy isn't the right word. I guess introverted. Like I do, I'm able to turn it on and and I love my job. I love talking, whether it's radio, TV, what have you. Um, But then afterwards, I always need my time to kind of like be by myself and and recharge. Um, But people are always surprised when I tell them that because I think maybe it's like, I can put on that front um, and then when it's time to, to wind down, I definitely need to kind of like be a, a hermit for a little bit. But yeah, I mean, becoming a journalist, like I didn't have the confidence to even say out loud that I wanted to be on air, that I wanted to be a broadcast journalist until even after college when I went back and got my master's in broadcast journalism from American Um in high school, like my friends and I were kind of just like the nice, quiet girls, wasn't the the most popular. I think there are, especially in an area like, like Radnor, where, you know, I talked about how it is such a great place to grow up, but they're kind of, um, I don't know, I, I think I formed an identity very early on and I was afraid to, to stray from that I- identity. Like I didn't want to be uh, identified as like a theater nerd or like the girl who did the morning announcements. Um, I think I was afraid of being judged by classmates and especially like friends. Um, and honestly, like to that note, I think when I first moved back to Philly in, in 2018, after being on air in totally different markets where I didn't know anyone, I found the hardest adjustment. And even to this day, the hardest thing for me that makes me the most nervous if anything, is knowing that people who I know personally, or like even people I went to high school with are listening or watching. Mm -hmm. There's something about just knowing people who knew me, who knew you, you know, back in the day when you aren't the person that you are now that, that Mm -hmm. at least for me kind of gets in my head a bit. Um, Mm -hmm. But it's something I've definitely, like I'm clearly confident now and and I'm glad that I, I moved past that, that insecurity. That's such an interesting topic. I think we probably all feel it's like going back to a high school reunion. Mm -hmm. So you almost feel you've grown up and you're in a different um, place emotionally and from a maturity level. And maybe I'm saying we because I've had that feeling, too. We feel almost like a fraud because they knew us as somebody else when we were teenagers. And now we're this different person and they didn't see the progression. Exactly. And. Yeah, I think it's when you're when it comes to, you know, pursuing your dreams, um, not to be corny with it, people are always going to judge you, I think, until you make it happen. So now it's easy to, to say like, oh, look at me, like, you know, I'm I'm on WIP, I'm in the Philly sports market. But I have a feeling that had I said, especially high schoolers are just teenagers are cruel and can be mean. Uh, I think I felt like if I had said that, you know, back in when I was in high school and I was a junior, senior, it would have been like, oh, Devin's weird or she's like full of herself. She thinks she can be this Philly sports broadcaster in a way. It's terrible, isn't it? I mean, 
you know, we're, we're supposed to be, especially girls and women, supporting each other and encouraging that. But I guess you were fortunate to have, you know, mom and dad be those supportive um, people around you. Because I think, you know, if I were to ask you, and I, I do love this question, who is someone who has believed in you that has helped you continue to, you know, to strive higher outside of your parents? Is there somebody? That's a good question. Um my my parents my family of course um i think throughout my years since since getting into this industry i've um really cherished started to cherish more and more other women in sports broadcasting in particular but also just friends because i would i worked in like regular news at first as well so friends who share the same um job, job, industry, title, responsibilities as me, because I've found that uh, broadcasting in particular, being on air, like it's a really specific skill set. Um, the hours are weird. Um, and it is one of those jobs that you can't really leave at home. You take it home with you. Um, so I having friends and particularly other women when it comes to sports, especially, is so important to me. Like one of my best friends is another Philly sports broadcaster. And I genuinely don't know what I'd, I'd be without her because it's so important to have that other woman who you can kind of go to like, Hey, like this thing happened or, Hey, this person said this thing to me, or, you know, I was working these hours or like random Tuesday night, which like in this industry, we work the craziest hours. It's, ha it's nice having at least one person who you can say like, hey, let's get dinner tonight because we know that we both can on a Sunday night during football yeah. season. So right. um, yeah, I would say other women in the industry who share similar positions as me is very important to me. Yeah. Um, there was a time you did live in LA for a period of time and worked for um, a talent agency. Mm -hmm. Tell me how, I think, you know, and you probably see this all the time, there's a, there's, um, a lot of egos in, yeah. in the industry. How do you, you know, you love the work and you love to be out there. How do you deal with the folks that, um, you know, have those egos and perhaps um, you're just in a situation that might be uncomfortable? Um, I think I've gotten used to being uncomfortable. It's almost like, in addiction in a way, right? Because being on air, being live, whatever you're doing, it is a little bit uncomfortable no matter how used to it you get. Um, but it's also a rush because of that discomfort, if you if that's what you want to call it. Uh, my very first job after undergrad was in LA working for a massive talent agency. I was an assistant. And I was actually talking about this the other week on, on another podcast. And uh, they were like, how was it? Like, was it like a first job out of college? You know, that's like aggressive. And looking back, like, it is kind of like, I'm like, wow, I'm amazed with myself that I just like up and moved to LA from, I went to Pitt for undergrad from Pittsburgh, worked at the biggest talent agency in the world with these like crazy personalities. But I think it set me up perfectly for what I do now because nothing scares me. Like if I could survive LA working at the largest talent agency with these massive personalities and celebrities around all the time, like screaming, right. yelling at me to answer the phone faster, nothing scares <laughs> me I, at the age of like 22. Like I, I think after that, it kind of made me like numb, I think can have like a negative connotation, but like numb is a good word for it. Like nothing scared like oh you can scare me okay i've been yelled at by the biggest talent agent in the world so i i'm all good with that um, i'm good at that i do not like to be yelled at <laughs> i mean i still don't like to be yelled at no it's not a great feeling but um yeah i think like working broadcasting then was almost like oh it's like a nice industry which most people would not uh, agree with right tell me if it tell me what is um one of the most challenging things being one of few women. So you're in an industry where, you know, you're surrounded by men and listen, great men and there's not so great men, but when you think about the industry in general, what is the most challenging? Um, it, challenging in terms of being a, a woman. Correct. Being one of few, you know, in your field. Yeah. Yes. Very few. Um, so it's always hard for me to put into words because I think when a lot of people, 
think or see, you know, that I'm a woman in sports working around men all the time, like, oh, it must be so hard. I've grown so used to it. I also grew up with a brother. I grew up loving sports. Like, I, I get along like with guy friends really well. So it doesn't bother me when I'm the only woman in a room. Like I'm used to that. I think what is hard for me is just the inherent bias that that most people have um, when it comes to women talking sports in particular, like sharing opinion, women sharing opinions about sports, which is why I love, but also one of the hardest things for me when it comes to sports talk, you know, sports talk radio, post game shows where like I am sharing my opinion and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to do so, but it's not lost on me that, you know, the first time I'm working with, with a male, a male counterpart in terms of like talent, there is that kind of like pause or like you never know how they're going to react or, you know, if they're even going to acknowledge it, mm -hmm. um, which has happened in the past. Like with my current jobs, everyone has been wonderful and great and so respectful, but it's not so much the like outward, you know, sexual harassment or like people saying creepy things. Like it's nothing like that that bothers me. It's more so just like the, the inherent like, oh, she's a young woman, like, why would I listen to her opinion that a lot of uh, men tend to have? Not all of them, not like making a generalization, but um, luckily in, in what I do now in both of my shows in, in Philly, at least, everyone's been super great and super respectful and respects and listens to my opinions, so. Yeah. And doesn't it feel great? You can probably sense it, right? When, when certain people that they're having that assumption of you and when you say something brilliant, <laughs> And then you say, I, I, you know, I do have the knowledge. I know what I'm talking about. That must well, feel great. That's a really, I'm glad you bring that up because yes, like I know I'll say something that's correct. And this is something that I need to work on. Like I know it's statistically, factually correct, whatever it is. And I question myself because a lot of times men won't say like, oh, that's a good point. Or, oh, that's, that's right. Or like, oh, I'm glad you bring that up. So then it's like a constant imposter syndrome where then I'm like, wait, did I say the wrong stat? Did I say the wrong name? Like, oh my gosh, where the pressure to not make a mistake or say the wrong thing is so much greater being a woman, because I think if, if men can make a mistake, accidentally say the wrong team, wrong player name, wrong stat, um, it's like, oh, okay, brush under the rug, like it happens, where if I do, it's, oh, she doesn't know anything. She's just a pretty face, you know, and immediately the respect goes out the window. You know, I think it's a communication thing because in general, women are very, we respond. There's a lot of um, what's, you know, banter back and forth where a man is never going to go, oh, that's a really good point. They're mm -hmm. just so dry. They say, they state something and then there's no response to what the person in front of them states. I think that's a, in general, a communication difference between men and women. I, I totally agree. And on the other side of that, something I've encountered uh, in sports talk is, you know, sports talks all about debating, like people have different opinions. Yeah. And I found a lot of men are afraid to, if I have a strong opinion on something, and I, I know they disagree, they're afraid to push back because I think they're so like, I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to like offend her or mm -hmm. you know, call her out where like, I've had to be like, guys, like, if you don't agree with me, say so. I don't like argue with me. I don't care just because I'm a woman doesn't mean that you can't, you know, push back a bit on my opinion. I could, we can have differing uh, opinions. So I think it really just comes down to equality being treated the same way that male counterparts are treated. Right. Yeah. It's a shame that it has to be that way. Mm -hmm. um, listen, we're going to go into our first break. Um, if you're listening on 1210, you'll hear from our watch team and we will be back with Devin Caney. Action News, celebrating 50 years with AccuWeather. The heat is on. In 2010, Philadelphia had a record of 55 days at or over 90 degrees. And those scorchers, they're on the rise. In fact, 10 of the 15 hottest summers occurred in the last two decades. Thank you for always trusting us to keep you informed. You're streaming and we're streaming. Get the AccuWeather forecast and severe storm alerts 24-7 on our 6ABC streaming app. Whether you're just getting started, already well on your way, planning for your future, drafting your vision, growing toward greatness, or finding that dreams really can come true. Whatever your next steps are, We'll be right here with you 
just like we have been for 150 years. Start here, grow here, stay here. Penn Community Bank, here we grow. Go for the midnight dares. Go for the memories. Go for the view that goes on forever. Go for the bubbles in your bathtub and in your drink. Go to bed whenever you want or don't. Go for him. Go for her. Go for the wind. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. The following is a real testimonial from the father of a young injured victim. I didn't think she was going to make it. Major Perry's daughter was the victim of a horrific accident caused by someone else's negligence. If you don't find the right counselor, law firm that you're looking for, you will get lost in the wilderness. Badly injured? Call the Fritz and Bianculli Law Firm at 215-458-2222 and find out why they say, we got this. Do you stream on a Roku, a Fire Stick, Android TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. Watch Action News Live. The big story on Action News tonight. Plus special programming, breaking news, and severe weather updates. Tremendous amounts of rain. Always on. Always the news team you trust. Watch 6ABC 24-7 on your streaming device. Search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. Hi, and welcome back to the show. I'm Tina Rocco, and I'm joined by Devin King this week. And Devin is um, a sports personality, but she's also um, a commentator for Jacob Media Sports uh, Eagles Post Game Show and also a host, co host with 94 WIP. Um, in addition to that, one of the things that you seem to be um, involved in quite a bit is. Uh, working lacrosse, professional lacrosse games, um, mm-hmm. sideline report or I guess sideline reporting. What yeah. Led you, yeah, what led you to your interest in uh, lacrosse? So, uh, well, being from Radnor, lacrosse is a really big, it's probably the biggest sport, uh, at least for Radnor, for the whole mainline area. Um, my brother played lacrosse, so it had always been something that I was familiar with. Um, but that's actually how I or why I moved back to Philly. I was living in Chicago in 2018 and I had always kind of known I wanted to a work in sports broadcasting in particular, and especially covering uh, Philadelphia sports. So uh, I was working, I was just a morning news anchor, like straight up news in Chicago. And I got a a call from uh, the national lacrosse league and it was based in Philadelphia. And I'm like, what is the national lacrosse league? I have never heard of this before. I hadn't really kept up with the professional lacrosse landscape before that. Um, but like took the call, took a few meetings and it was based in Philadelphia. And that was the biggest sell to me. Cause I was like, well, wait a second, this could be a way for me to maybe transition or, or get my foot in the door in the Philly uh, sports media market. And I did. It's crazy to think like that was in 2018. Now looking back at 2022, um, I, I have kind of transitioned from lacrosse to, to Philly sports, which has been amazing. But I've also loved my time covering lacrosse and I still cover Like I still do it. I still sideline report, um, especially for the Philadelphia Wings. Um, and I fell in love with the whole lacrosse community. It's a beautiful sport. It's such a fun game to watch. Uh, and all of the, it's a really close knit community. All the people that I've met throughout my time covering lacrosse um, have just been wonderful. So I'm guessing, you know, Matt Rambo. I do. Yeah. I love, okay. I love that you bring that up because every single person who's like, oh, you cover lacrosse. Oh, you're in Philly. Do you know Matt Rambo? He's always like, <laughs> the first name he well, but yeah. my son got to play with him at LaSalle. They were on the oh, same team. Cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we Matt love him. Plays for the wings, and he is yep. very good. Yes. Yeah, he's amazing. Um, something else that you do, I, I just what what is a betting analyst? It sounds like my worst nightmare because that sounds like numbers. Yeah, <laughs> numbers. <laughs> so yeah, sports betting uh, is very big, as I'm sure you know. Um, so an analyst, like I, uh, am an analyst for a Sunday morning NFL show, uh, for BetQL network, which is a national radio and digital network. Um, and we go through the games and, um, 
I don't know. It's kind of, I, I think I got into sports betting and, and gambling um, maybe like two years ago because I partnered with Superbook Sports and it's breaking down, you know, the lines of every game. Um, I focus mainly on NFL and college football, but then when they're not in season, I can also do like NBA and whatnot. Um, and it's, it, it's funny because I, I took that job and I remember talking to my agent about it and being pretty insecure because I'm not good with numbers. Math has never been my strong suit. I always joke and say like, I'm a journalist for a reason, like math and numbers are not my thing. Um, and I'm, I ended up being pretty good at it. Uh, and now it's, it's nice to have the title analyst in front of my name, especially for that Sunday morning show. Um, because I think I agree with you, like, like numbers and all that sounds complicated. And yet, uh, I feel pretty confident in my abilities to, to kind of tell and predict and, and, uh, map out where the games can and should go and what the best bets are going to be. And hopefully, you know, win some other people money and, uh, yeah, it's fine. It's a blast. You know, I always say this is not a, you know, very original question, but I would like to know your typical day because your hands are in so many different places and, you know, a lot of moving parts. Mm. What is a typical day for you? And maybe there isn't one. <laughs> there isn't one. Yeah. So it depends on what, what time of year it is, uh, what sports are in season. Right now with the NFL just kind of starting back up, I'm still figuring out what exactly my day to day looks like. Um but usually uh, I wake up, I uh, immediately start listening to WIP, which is where I work, um, listening to their morning show, their midday shows, uh, checking in on and seeing, you know, what happened the night before in terms of like Philly's loss last night, unfortunately. Um, and I do a sports betting show for Philly Voice at 11 a.m., so usually do that, usually have a few meetings. Um, if it's an Eagles game day, I have to drive out to Atlantic City, prep for the game, watch the game. Um, it really just depends on on what sporting events are happening that day. But there is pretty much zero routine. Like, I never know what day of the week it is. Like, I woke up today. Today feels like a Monday to me. Like, you yeah. could not tell me that today is Wednesday. Well, that's what the Eagles played on Monday night. I think we're yes, all off. Yeah, the Monday night football is also not helping the whole situation no. whatsoever. Right. Do you thrive on that? I, I'm assuming you do because you shared with me. I, most people, I think the greatest thing we can ever say is that I am exactly where I'm meant to be. Mm. And you said that to me. Um, so first I want to say why, you know, what is it that, that brings you so much joy? Um, and then I would assume that this kind of lifestyle is, is exciting to you. Mm -hmm. It is. I would not want to do anything else. Um, and it is a, a uniquely satisfying feeling to, to genuinely feel, which I do. Like I am doing exactly what I meant to do, what I was supposed to do. Um, and I love it. And like I get all the time from people who don't work in sports, who don't work in broadcasting, like, oh, doesn't that suck? Like you have to work Sunday mornings, you have to work uh, on foot, like you can't drink at Eagles game, you can't go to Eagles tailgates. And I'm like, no, I love it. I don't care that I have to work on weekends. I've grown so used to it. Honestly, at this point, it's nice having an excuse to not have to go out on Friday and Saturday nights. Right. Um, it, it truly is, I don't want to say an addiction, but... I think other, especially broadcast, you know, when you're going live, it's a rush. And without it, without those hectic days, those crazy schedules, those like chaotic broadcasts, like I, life would be dull to me. Like I, I love, you know, having a different schedule every day. It's exciting. Um, I just don't think I could ever do like sit at a desk and, and not be able to, to interact with athletes and talk about sports. Um, I love what I do and I'm very grateful for it. Do you have um, a daily or maybe not a daily, but a, a mantra, an ongoing mantra that um, pulls you out of those days when everything kind of goes awry um, and you're feeling stressed or overwhelmed? Yes. Uh, and it is pretty similar to what I, what I said um, for my previous answer. It's just, I'm grateful and lucky to, to be able to do what I do, you know, cause I was having a moment like that last night, I was talking to my mom and like, she asked me a question about, I feel like go get my car 
fixed or something checked on. I don't know. Some, one of those things that parents help you out with. And she was asking me to like give her a date that I could like schedule it for. And I'm like, I can't even, I don't know, mom. Like I just got back from Atlantic city. Like I was up late last night because the football game and this and da, 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 da. And then it's like this moment always hits me where it's like, this is such a good problem to have. This is a problem right. that people wish that they had. Right. And I think gratitude always pulls me out of those anxious um, spirals. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, one of the biggest topics around sports and women is um, the inequality as far as I would say two things, exposure for women's sports and compensation. You know, we talk about that in business as well, but are you seeing, is there anything positive you can share with us that you're seeing where things are changing and moving into a better place? Uh, well, I'm, love, I'm loving uh, watching the WNBA just expand. And uh, I think like women's soccer, uh, the Euro, Euro championship in London had the more viewers than uh, the men's did last summer, which is incredible. So I love seeing women's professional sports grow in popularity. Um, the compensation issue is obviously still something that we need to constantly be working at. Like as a woman, like when I have a, a co-host or, you know, I'm like a commentator on a show, like I wish that it was maybe more transparent in terms of pay and what everyone's getting, but I'm at a point where I'm like, I don't even want to know because I know it's just going to make me mad if I find out what like my male counterpart is making versus what right. I'm making. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, there. I think it's we're making progress, but there's still a very long way to go. Can you talk about have the, your ma your male counterparts? You mentioned the guys that you work with um, on the Eagles post game show. Is what have you learned from them? Uh, I've learned so much from Derek Gunn. I mean, I worked with him all of last season. He's the best. Um, same with Mark Farzetta is just the nicest, most fun person to work with. Um, watching Eagles games, first of all, it's always a pinch me moment. We've only had two games with our current cast for the Jacob Post game show, but it's myself, it's Derek Gunn, it's Mike Missinelli and Seth Joyner. And we all watch the game in this like green room um, at Ocean Casino Resort, which is where we do the show from. And like Monday night, I look around, I'm like, this is so wild. I, like how lucky am I that I get to watch the Eagles with a former Eagles player and Seth Joyner mm -hmm. with, you know, radio legend, Mike Missnelli, and with former Eagles insider, everyone knows Derek Gunn and like listening to their insights and what they say and how they watch the games is so eye-opening and I've already learned so much just in those two games watching with them like like when a play happens and hearing like Seth Joy like maybe it's a bad defensive play Seth Joyner was a linebacker like hearing his reaction on like what should have happened and like him seeing very particular like specific moments that went wrong in the play that I would have never noticed on my own mm -hmm. um is just so incredible and uh I'm very grateful for the opportunity. I would love to be a fly on the wall watching you guys watch the game. <laughs> are you taking notes or are you talking to each other? You know, what's happening when you're doing it? Because it's work. You're watching a football game, but yeah. you're thinking about what you're going to, you know, touch on. Yeah, it's a little, it's a mix of both. Um, we're all taking notes. Like I always take notes when the Eagles play. Um, they are as well. But then also like chatting, like we're not talking the whole time because I think everyone needs to like, kind of focus and listen and watch the broadcast. But like if something happens, something good, something bad, it's kind of like, oh, did you see that? Or like maybe a little something happened like in the corner of the broadcast and we might have missed it. It's like, oh, did you see that? Like, let's look back on that. So uh, it's a mix of both. And sometimes it's just laughing if something funny happens or something ridiculous. Like it, it's a it's a mixed bag of, of reactions, but we are all definitely taking notes and planning for the show. Yeah. Okay, tell me what you would say to a young girl who is a communications major um, at Pitt or wherever. Um, advice, you know, something that when you look back, you could help her not, you know, fall into that um, that bad decision, I'll say, or just that lack of belief in herself. What kind of advice would you give her? Um, I would say believe in yourself no matter what 
the outside noise says, like, even if it's someone within the industry, um, and always stay true to yourself. Be, I think I've started finding more and more success, especially in the Philadelphia market, the more I just was my authentic self, like I, on Twitter, on social media, on air, like, I, I think a lot of people will tell you like, oh, you know, maybe you don't fit this mold. Maybe you don't look like the classic newswoman. Maybe you don't sound like a classic newswoman or whatever this hypothetical young girl wants to be. Don't listen to that. It doesn't matter. You are yourself and you bring, everyone brings something special and unique to the table that makes you stand out. So focus on that, hone in on that and never lose that voice. Like I think a lot of people heading into news broadcasting will try to like fit a certain mold. And it's when you start finally embracing yourself, even your flaws uh, is when you start standing out and, and finding success. You know, I think it's inevitable in any field, there are people that are notables and it's inevitable that people will compare you or ask you about Erin Andrews because she's kind of that woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I love that you said, I don't want to be the next Aaron Andrews. I want to be Devin Caney. Mm -hmm. I do. Yes. Yeah. I get that all the time. I, I, I get, cause I, you know, I cover football. I have blonde hair. Uh, I'm, I think we're both tall. I don't know how tall Aaron Andrews is, but she looks tall. Um, <laughs> and yeah, you know, I want to be Devin Caney. I want to be myself. Um, I love sideline reporting like that. It would, of course, be incredible to sideline report on the NFL. But I also love being able to share my opinion on sports talk radio. Um, I love kind of forging the way, forging my own path uh, and making my brand and my name my own um, and not fitting that like, oh, you're a blonde woman who works in sports, Aaron Andrews, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I just want to be the next Devin Caney. Yeah, that's the best advice, really, for for especially for young girls. And so if I were to ask you, you know, what is your ultimate goal, your ultimate role? Um, would you say that right now you're you're exploring and accepting all the opportunities that are coming your way? Yeah, I mean, I have uh, my hands in kind of every aspect of the industry at this point, And I really like that and enjoy it because it allows me like Sports talk radio, if you had asked me even back in 2018 when I was working in Chicago, like I, I would have said, I don't, I haven't listened to sports talk radio in years because I haven't lived in Philly, which it's really big here, of course. Um, so, and now it's, it's literally my favorite thing to do, I think, out of every area of sports broadcasting, um, because I'm allowed to share an opinion, which if you look at, you know, sideline reporting, um, hosting on air, as a woman, the roles that women are typically given on especially television broadcasts, it's not to share their opinion. It might be moderating, you know, men yelling at each other and giving their opinions, but it's never the role of like, oh, this is what I think. So to be given that opportunity is so, so important and special to me. And I would love to capitalize on that and keep kind of forging ahead with that so other girls don't look at other women or women who are successful in the sports broadcasting industry and say like, oh, I can only be a sideline reporter or, oh, I can only be, you know, the host moderating the men. I can be Devin Caney, who's giving her opinion fearlessly and not backing down from it. I can be uh, someone who is able to have an attitude, maybe be upset about an Eagles loss or a Falcons loss, whatever their team is, uh, and not feel the need to kind of like reel it in and be just a pretty face on TV. That's a great way to end the show. It's about finding your voice, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, well, you have the coolest job and um, I'm sure there's more to come. And I really appreciate your coming on and sharing your story, Devin. I appreciate you having me. This was so great. Thank you. Stay with us. And up next, you'll hear from Sherry Marson, our Lifestyle Watch contributor. And she's going to be joined by Brianna DeBose, the author of the ABCs for College Athletics or Athletes. Excuse me. We'll be right back. Action News, celebrating 50 years of AccuWeather. 
The heat is on. In 2010, Philadelphia had a record of 55 days at or over 90 degrees. And those scorchers, they're on the rise. In fact, 10 of the 15 hottest summers occurred in the last two decades. Thank you for always trusting us to keep you informed. You're streaming and we're streaming. Get the AccuWeather forecast and severe storm alerts 24-7 on our 6ABC streaming app. Whether you're just getting started, already well on your way, planning for your future, drafting your vision, growing toward greatness, or finding that dreams really can come true. Whatever your next steps are, we'll be right here with you, just like we have been for 150 years. Start here, grow here, stay here. Penn Community Bank, here we grow. Go for the midnight dares. Go for the memories. Go for the view that goes on forever. Go for the bubbles in your bathtub and in your drink. Go to bed whenever you want. Or don't. Go for him. Go for her. Go for the wind. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. The following is a real testimonial from the father of a young injured victim. I didn't think she was going to make it. Major Perry's daughter was the victim of a horrific accident caused by someone else's negligence. If you don't find the right counselor, law firm that you're looking for, you will get lost in the wilderness. Badly injured? Call the Fritz and Bianculli Law Firm at 215-458-2222 and find out why they say, we got this. Do you stream on a Roku, a Fire Stick, Android TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. Watch Action News Live. The big story on Action News tonight. Plus special programming, breaking news, news. and severe weather updates. Always on. Always always the news team you trust. trust. Watch 6ABC 24-7 on your streaming device. Search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. Lifestyle segment of Women to Watch. I'm Sherry Morrison. Today I would like to welcome author, management consultant, and instructor at Georgetown University, Brianna DuBose. Welcome to the show, Brianna. Thank you, Sherry. I'm so excited to be here. So very, very excited. Thank you for the opportunity. Sure. This is a big week for sports. I absolutely love it. I was always, I always had something going on that had to do with sports growing up. My father thought I needed to take a break from it every once in a while and study. (laughs) Brianna has written a book, an excellent reference guide, called The ABCs for College Athletes. It reminds me a little bit of Cliff Notes. This is not only timely with the name image likeness, also known as NIL, that is huge conversation all over the sports world, but also with Title IX. What sparked the idea to write this book, Brianna? Honestly, well, my research that I did at the University of Pennsylvania, shout out to Philly, a lot of love for Philly. Um, I was living there. I was doing research while I was in grad school. And ultimately, you know, I wanted to be able to pair my experience having played sports for 17 years of my life with uh, something that's more practical. Obviously, kind of academic language is a little bit like it makes you fall asleep sometimes. And so I wanted to be able to pair it with something that is more practical, easy to understand, and of course, quick to go through, but packed with information. Were you, were you involved in college sports? Tell us a little bit about your background, where you're from, went to school, and, and did you receive a sports scholarship if you were in sports? Yes, yes, to all of those. So I grew up in the DC area, um, Prince George County, for those who are familiar, not too far from Philly, probably like two and a half hours, depending on traffic on 95. Um, I played uh, in the WCAC conference. For those of you who aren't familiar, I'm biased, but it's also true. One of the best sports conferences in the country uh, for for high school sports. And um, I went on to play collegiately at Virginia Commonwealth University in uh, Richmond, Virginia. And I graduated from American University in DC. So I played both schools um, and that's a division one school. I was on scholarship and playing women's basketball. So yeah, 17 years, 17 years up to, um, up to playing, playing collegiately. 
that's a long time. Really yes. long time. So the book uh, you wrote and the way you format it is very easy to read, which makes it a great reference for anybody, um, especially in a pinch. When you literally go and you literally go through the ABCs with each of the chapters. The first chapter A is economy, B is for business, C is for coach. You cover nutrition, wellness, transition, victories, losses, working as a team member, um, and you even get into money, spending, buying, budgeting, and different sources for information and an education on money, using it, saving it in college. Um, yes. You, you send all of the necessary messages to athletes, parents, and coaches. Um, is this for all levels of athletes or just the higher level headed to pro or Olympic level sports? Honestly, if, if you're not even an athlete, you probably will get something out of the book, but it's primarily geared towards high school student athletes, their parents, coaches. Um, I have a big goal of just giving you this information before you embark on the journey. Right. So giving you this overview of things that you may expect along the way and be able to help you ask those pertinent questions, not feel as overwhelmed and be able to make the most of your collegiate experience and feel like you got something out of it. So it's a perfect read for for that group in particular, even uh, college athletes as well, if they ask themselves, hey, what am I, you know, you look up junior year and you're like, what am I doing with my life? Have I been able to take advantage of all these resources? Do I have time to? Am I asking the right questions? Because it's a lot harder once you're in the system, but you know, it's a great read for them as well. If you want to just kind of do a little pulse check and see how I can make the most of what you have left. Yeah, it, it's great for students and parents who are entering the, the new world of it all. And um, but I think, unfortunately, um, a lot of people don't realize until they're in the thick of it that um, they need help. I, I mean, I was I went to college and I played hockey and lacrosse. They asked me to swim. My father was like, you know, enough. Like, you, you need to study. But uh, he sent me budget sheets because I really needed to not just for money, but for my time. Um, you know, he wanted to make sure that I was studying and doing everything I needed to do in addition to being good at sports. So what, uh, what can you tell us about NIL? It's, it's huge and it's a positive change for athletes, whether they are headed um, for professional or not. Can you explain what it is? For sure. In plain, simple language, uh, NIL is basically name, image, and likeness, and everybody has a name, everybody has their own image and likeness. You do, I do, anybody on the street does. And for the longest time, up until July 1st, 2021, last year, college athletes were kind of the exception of the rule, but kind of in a negative way. They couldn't use their name, image, and likeness to profit, and their non-athlete peers could, of course, run their own businesses and start YouTube accounts or make money off of social media or run camps or certain initiatives to make money off of. And if a student athlete did that, they would have major, major uh, implications and punishments from the NCAA that could include losing your scholarship, being uh, on, on probation, all different things, just for wanting to use your own name, image, and likeness and make some extra money. And you know, this is a fantastic opportunity for student athletes. Everybody's still trying to figure it out. Um, even us at, you know, I get to be on the task force in Georgetown um, where I am an instructor and, you know, everyone's trying to figure out how to best utilize it and figure out how best support student athletes. Cause ultimately they are running their own business. They're entrepreneurs, they're running their own business that comes with, you know, making sure your books are right. Making sure you're paying, paying taxes. Who do you have on your team? Making sure you have someone running social media and being able to uh, get all the opportunities that you may want. So it's a lot, especially when you already have another full-time job of being an athlete in college. And of course, going to school, trying to maintain your grades. So it's a lot. And, you know, people only see like, oh, this one student athlete got a half million dollar deal. Those deals are far and few in between, but there's also opportunities for people to uh, make money if they're not, you know, that mega star. Are, are there certain things in particular that are easier for people to take advantage and capitalize on on themselves? 
You know, I, like I said, I look at it from the business point of view. You're pretty much running a small business. And so it's not just social media because that can often be misconstrued. A lot of times the opportunities may seem like they're coming through social media, but it could come in the form of you creating something that you enjoy with your teammates. It could come in the form of wanting to work with a local business in the town that you're a student athlete at. So there are other opportunities outside of social media, especially if that's not your thing, uh, to be able to make money and profit. Sure. And social media takes a long time. I mean, that's very time consuming. <laughs> People don't think it is, but it is. Um, you wrote, pick a school that positions you to win, not only in sports, but in life. What are the things you look for to make sure a collection of schools? Well, what I look at, particularly with that quote, is if you were if you were to get injured or something happens and you can't play your sport ever again in your life what would you be doing how would you select your school what things are you interested in outside of your sport to be able to contribute contribute to your life and well-being right so that can be looking at certain majors, looking at even you know areas of study that you'd be interested in. Because I had no clue what I wanted to major in when I got into college, but you know, looking at how does an area feel? How does the city feel around you? How do how do you feel in this community? Does this is this somewhere where you can grow? How's the alumni network? Being able to look at things outside of sports um, that can contribute to your life after college is really important. So. Yeah, and, and you speak quite a bit about transferable skills. Um, and a lot of people don't even, they're not even aware of what's inside of them that they can use not just for their sports, which they've been training so hard for, for such a long time, but a lot of those skills are transferable to a job, a career, just your day-to-day um, interaction with people outside of sports, um, you know, whether it's being a leader. Um, so, uh, is there, is there a certain way for people to become more aware of those skills? Honestly, it comes down to practice. And that's kind of the issue that I have with college athletics, because it's like, on one hand, they give you all these resources, but then they don't really teach you how to sustain them after you're done playing. So it's kind of like you get a bunch of resources and then all of a sudden they're gone and you're like, whoa, what do I do with my life? How do I navigate being, you know, not an athlete and just being a regular person? And so with the transferable skills, like even I talk about it in the book, like start small, you know, if you're really good at teamwork and communication, put a number to it. You know, I led a team of, you know, 15 young women and did X, Y, and Z. How can that transfer over into the working world? It could be something like um, very uh, time oriented and organized, you know, made sure I, with all my competing demands, I was able to meet my goals and expectations while also um, being a team player or something like that. It's just all about the how to. It's not just like, oh, I have these skills. Great. Well, do you know how to use them? Do you know how to frame them to your advantage? Do you know how to quantify them? That type of thing. And I'm sure if you have a good coach, that's helpful. Um, yeah. You wrote that there are good coaches out there. A good coach can change your life in the moment, but a great coach is with you for a lifetime. And I, I'll tell you what, I have probably one of the best in the whole wide world. I was really, really fortunate. Um, so it's it's good if you realize you have a lifer that you're working with to take advantage of their knowledge. Too. Absolutely. What do you think is the most important letter in your book? I think the most important letter in my book has to be letter H. Um, and I change that all the time because like, there's just, it, depending on where we're at in the world, I'm like, it could be letter B, it could be whatever. But today I'm going with letter H and I have a very, very big emphasis on holistic health. So how are you taking care of yourself and advocate for yourself, both mental health, physical health? Do you need to take a break? Are you looking for resources that you need in order to sustain yourself? Are you getting outside help? You know, maybe you need to go to a doctor outside of your athletics department to get a second opinion. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, you're in this for such a short amount of time and uh, you want to make sure that after you're done playing, 
that you're healthy and whole uh, for the long haul. Well, I really enjoyed the Y and the Z, and maybe it was just kind of it was coming to a close at the end of the book. Remember, the Y is you. Remember who you are, where you are, how you got started. Uh, you know where you're going. Don't don't be too big on yourself, screaming out to the world, "Here I am, here I am." Before you really uh, acknowledged and gotten through all of the steps to who you really are going to end up being. And then Z for Zamboni, the yes. research of the ice because there's so much impact it's, it's it's never going to be perfect forever so you know that zamboni needs to come through and put on a whole new surface so uh and that's again where those transferables come from. absolutely um, so anyway uh we're we're running short on time here i i really appreciate you coming on the show taking the time to speak thank with you. us um and thank you for um Putting this information together, I really enjoy the simplicity and the brevity of it. So much valuable insight. I honestly think that the ABCs for the college athlete should be presented to every athlete, especially those receiving scholarships when they are attending college. Absolutely, I'll work on that for a person who are absolutely unconnected. For more information about Brianna and her books, speaking engagements, and workshops, go to www.briannaboast. Dot com. That's B as in boy, R I A N as in Nancy A, D as in dog, Q as in boy, O S E dot com. Thank you again. Thank Sue you. will be right back to close out the show. Keep living your dreams, ladies. Action News, celebrating 50 years of AccuWeather. The heat is on. In 2010, Philadelphia had a record of 55 days at or over 90 degrees. And those scorchers, they're on the rise. In fact, 10 of the 15 hottest summers occurred in the last two decades. Thank you for always trusting us to keep you informed. You're streaming and we're streaming. Get the AccuWeather forecast and severe storm alerts 24-7 on our 6ABC streaming app. Whether you're just getting started, Already well on your way, planning for your future, drafting your vision, growing toward greatness, or finding that dreams really can come true. Whatever your next steps are, we'll be right here with you, just like we have been for 150 years. Start here, grow here, stay here. Penn Community Bank, here we grow. Go for the midnight dares. Go for the memories. Go for the view that goes on forever. Go for the bubbles in your bathtub and in your drink. Go to bed whenever you want or don't. Go for him. Go for her. Go for the wind. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. The following is a real testimonial from the father of a young injured victim. I didn't think she was going to make it. Major Perry's daughter was the victim of a horrific accident caused by someone else's negligence. If you don't find the right counselor, law firm that you're looking for, you will get lost in the wilderness. Badly injured? Call the Fritz and Bianculli Law Firm at 215-458-2222 and find out why they say, we got this. Do you stream on a Roku, a Fire Stick, Android TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. Watch Action News Live. The big story on Action News tonight. Plus special programming, breaking news, and severe weather updates. Tremendous amounts of rain. Always on. Always the news team you trust. Watch 6ABC 24-7 on your streaming device. Search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. Everyone, for another week of Women to Watch. Thank you as always to our producer, Tone, Sherry Marson, for her weekly Lifestyle Watch segment. I, I really enjoyed that conversation with Brianna DeBose um, and all of our watch team sponsors. We so much appreciate their support. Next week, I'll be joined by Linda Kahn. Linda is an author and she is a very longtime successful sportscaster with ESPN. Have a great week, everyone. We can do a summer party. <laughs> it's the weather. Can we do this show outside or on the roof? 
weekdays at 9 on 6ABC.